Perfect. Yeah, let's cool. start the show. And here we are. And Good morning, it's everybody. Reader's Cup Day. Yeah, we made it. The biggest what? day of racing. Hope everybody had good luck yesterday with the juveniles. I did not have good luck. finally come to a conclusion. <laughs> yes, it has. Yes, it has. We have a great show, pre show lined up today. We are bringing on, of course, Sarge. And we do have a special guest coming on as well. We are going to go over the late pick five here at Keeneland. But also, to get you prepped for the day, check out our YouTube. We did had an incredible lineup, breaking down each race with some top professionals, giving you their picks. And, of course, we had to chime in with our picks, so good luck with that. I'll be right back, so good luck, everybody, with this train wreck. Uh, You're just leaving? No, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go to something. All right, go ahead. Keep talking. Well, thank you for chiming in just to say that. Like no one, <laughs> right. no one, no one cared up until that point. No, 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 they did not. Um, so we have a great day. It's supposed to be a beautiful day at Keeneland. They're saying it's 70. The dirt is fast, the turf is good, so we should have a great day of racing. Hope everybody had luck in that first stakes race that just finished with Nashville coming in. Coming in, destroyed. So yeah. Destroying the rest of the it's field there. Destroyed the field. Going off there. at one and nine while everyone else, I think the second closest odds was was still double digits. All right. Yeah. Oh all right, everybody. Sorry I wasn't here for everybody listening. Again, no there. I know, I know. I'm shit. gonna apologize. No, they do. They do because <laughs> I'm hearing guys talk and it's like I feel like you guys are like downing me right now. Like I'm I'm like almost feeling down. Like, what are you guys tired? I know it's 7 15 in the morning, but come on. I know Alex is hungover. Yeah, very- and I know. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I don't know, but they like, come on, guys, let's not board. Let's not board everybody. It's the biggest day in racing. That's why I'm wearing the hat. That's why I got the outfit on. I wore this. You didn't even dress this hat. nice last year when we actually. I, I went wore to the, the same hat. outfit last year. You didn't have the hat. I didn't wear the, the hat. hat. Make, the true. hat makes it all. So yeah, that's true. I didn't have the hat, but uh, um, that's minus there. But yeah, this is true. I'm gonna keep playing with my earphones, hoping nobody can hear it. But okay, so yes, Nashville, good call by by the way, uh, Big Gary. And we talked about this. That makes him maybe uh, on the radar for three year olds. Looks really good. Um, it's 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 great. So I uh, hope everybody out there won yesterday. I got my teeth kicked in, to be honest. Yes, did I. Um, so anybody out there, let us know if you won yesterday, and if you did, I'm gonna really be like you suck because you threw darts at a board, and you're better at darts than I am. But um, no, there were some things that I guess you could have worked around and we heard uh, on Juvenile. But I mean, let's face it, Juvenile Friday, let's just say, or Futures Friday, how do you know? It's it's like the first week of the season in the NFL, AJ. Don't you believe that? Well, I It's think- like you don't know. It's a good time to make money, but also, the oh, fuck do we know? Well, I mean, you know? when you're looking at the picks that we gave on our Juvenile show, I mean, out of the like the what six juvenile races, I think I did hit three of them. Yeah. Uh, with essential quality in in the juvenile, I and I was a big believer. I've been a big believer in Golden Pal for a long time, but I mean, the rest of them nowhere close. Yeah, like, yeah. Nowhere yeah. Nowhere close. Say that. Golden Pal race was really weird because the ten almost fell out of the gate, which changed the whole race. But then you saw Golden Pal literally Ortiz pull him back. Mm-hmm. Like I've never seen before. Honestly, they let everybody catch up and then just blow everybody's doors off. So that was very impressive, but yet different ball game if the 10 doesn't stumble out of the gate. <laughs> but I mean, that's why it's horse racing. You know, I mean, I don't know. I'd like to hear other people's angles on that and everything like that. So um, let's go on from that. But uh, yeah, I, uh, but yeah, it, it's why you got to use the all button. It's why when Wendy, who hit a race, Randy L. Johnson coming in hot. I would if I actually played those. Yeah. I don't know how anybody thinks I have enough money to play all. <laughs> first of all, I wish I could I play well, all. Let's, I, just, I so wish I could. We had Wendy Oriel on to discuss the distaff, and she was telling us about this back wheel bet that she plays. She played it yesterday. Thirty-nine dollar bet made her only eight hundred and fifty dollars. Well, yeah, I mean that's it makes sense with these juveniles. She had a point Not where bad. you play these horses on the board. The yeah. problem with the only problem with that bet is if those favorites win, she loses that thirty-nine dollars. She makes into a dollar if they win. So it's a good bet, especially with the ju- juveniles. Um, uh, that's a good point, Jay. I yeah. like that. Um, uh, but I, I do. By the agree way, Jay, with that. check your email. 
Yes, Jay, check your email. Um, because 10 years ago, these three-year-olds were two years old. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. That's the no, weirdest it's, thing it's I've ever heard in my life. It's 2020. It's been 12 it's years. 2020, yeah. 2019. It was seven year of the Triple Crown Trail. It's been a twelve year for the Breeders' like, Cup it Trail was, in twenty twenty. Like it was been at least what? Okay, this years you now. don't. American make... Pharaoh won the Triple Crown. <laughs> it's been you know twenty nineteen was actually <laughs> four years ago today, <laughs> I think. And you know, yeah. It's All been right. A long well, time. I love your. I love your angle on how two years makes ten years. We have an officer on deck. Where have you been this whole 2020? Everything is going on. Real fast. Let's bring him on. Officer on deck. Fucking hot. Is a British Cup day or what? Wow. Obviously. Look at my hat. I do. Look at this. (laughs) See. We're like Bonnie and Clyde here. I I think Sarge and I have the same shirt, by the way. I saw him wearing it the other day. I think this is the same one, Sarge. I I, I sent it to you. I just cut it in half. That's all. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. So everybody out there, good morning to Nick the Sarge Hines. Pleasure. We are excited to have on, which we do a lot, but you know why? Because he brings a lot of um, insight, obviously, insight, expertise, knowledge, expertise, and a great personality. Let's face it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And also, so let me start out, Sarge, right away by saying, "Well, good morning, uh, happy Breeders' Cup Saturday," because that's basically this is the biggest day for us, Sarge. Correct? This is the Super big. Bowl of horse racing. It is. It is. And as opposed to bringing like pure insight, I hope to bring you some hindsight. Yeah. There you go, because hindsight uh, is 2040, by the way. Ura. Hey, uh, <laughs> I just I, First of all, before we get into the show, obviously, with uh, being a championship Saturday, and I want to say I want to thank the racing gods, because generally we as horse people, as horse gamblers, as horse players, we tend to complain about the racing gods have it out uh, for horse racing. But looking at the weather in Southern California versus what it is in Lexington, Kentucky today, in light of uh, the pandemic 2020, and by the way, stay safe, everyone out there, and uh, you know, be vigilant. I, I want to wish AJ good luck with his uh, fighting Trojans uh, today. Fight on, baby, fight on. As they kick <laughs> off, and I know it's balls back, baby. Yeah. Well, you're unbeaten for now, so let's hope <laughs> you can do that. Uh, no, it's actually funny, and to bring that up real quick, you're right, Sarge. We have great weather over in Kentucky, Beautiful and in our weather today. here is not so great, which we're is odd. We're getting this thing in California. I think they call it rain. We're not quite used to this, yeah, but this is odd, odd for us. Um, so bring us back to our Queens days a couple of years ago. But yes. let me tell you something real quick for everybody out there. Sarge, you're going to kick out of this too. Sarah got on her um, text messages this morning. Or whatever, not text messages, I guess. I have notifications. Notifications, that's what they're um, called. And which I did take a screenshot of because I thought it now, was... I just want to ask everybody, though, what's what's a weirder situation? You guys are going to kick out of this. What's yeah, a weirder yeah. situation, guys? Two notifications. Two notifications. One says, expecting rain around 5 a.m. The other says, man punching parked vehicles... Near our house. Near our house. Um, uh, I think the man punching parked parked vehicles is uh, a scary thought because it could be the uh, the downing of an apocalypse if you're not careful. Yeah, but so so is rain in California and Los Angeles. It's not strange. I've literally had my car parked on the side of the road in uh, Van Nuys and my side view mirror was punched off. As long with everyone else who had parked on that on that same road as I did. Apparently, in our okay. neighborhood, Sarge, it's, it's knows thing, what happens in your neighborhood. Okay, so let's. Punch cars all right, here. so let's um, move. Let's move on to yeah, that. Let's, guys. let's get in. So that was a funny thing. So, was, Sarge, how do we do? How do we do yesterday for you? Well, how was everything yesterday? Um, you know, all in all, I ended up doing okay, and I want to thank uh, Essential Quality in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile for that. It, it could have been highly lucrative. Um, you know, I've given out fire at will to like multiple people, including, uh, Joe Moran, my, uh, longtime friend, uh, comrade with my racehorse. I told him two or three days ago, Hey, fire at will is the horse you got to look out for coming off of that pilgrim win. And so I, I played a, a pick five and I should have played multiple of all the horse I left off was him. So I ended up with four or five, uh, the pick five ended up paying over $6,000 yesterday. I still got, you know, money back, but, um, essential quality was just it was such a, a blessing for that horse not to break on terms because they went so quickly. But, uh, you know, he's a genuine article. He's unbeaten. He's a son of Tappet. He's Godolphin. And I thought the, the best part of the whole element of the equation 
Kerry McLaughlin and his longstanding relationship uh, with uh, Godolphin as an agent now, first time winning a Breeders' Cup, and his rider, Luis Saez, getting his first ever Breeders' Cup victory. So tying in all of that, pretty uh, pretty awesome at the end of the day. And, you know, again, I, I think uh, Brad Cox uh, could be on tap for another big day today with Monomoy Girl. No, I no, I agree, and that's my single, obviously, and we'll go over that. Um, you guys can hear me right. I put that back on. Um, yeah, um, no, Monomoy Girl. That, oh, were, that you, was were, you, were you on mute? Were you on mute? I was on mute because I, I was asking, no, I'm just asking for something. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, I, hey, I agree. Listen, the whole the fan base put me on mute. Um, but, Sarge was on a roll, well, no, and I just didn't I, want to interrupt. No, I just right. yeah, that makes sense. Um, I do want to say though, um, I, I hear you told Joe Moran about that. You know, your comrade at my racehorse and all your other friends, but Sarge, he didn't tell us about Fire Out Well. I'm a little upset about that right now because I didn't. I did that horse. You didn't tell us about that. No. Well, we won't hold it against you. That's it's all fine. right. That's it's all fine. Right. It's it's fine. This, I, today, you, today, you owe us. You owe us. Today. I gave you all the other information you need. I know. Make. I know. He had uh, to hold one thing for himself. You know why? Because so. he, he figured we were smart enough. That's why. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. That's the answer. Um, but but but, you but you're wrong when you think that. Oh you're goodness. Gracious. Terribly wrong. Yep. Um, he doesn't really think that. AJ. All right. So well, so sorry. Let's go. Let's go into it right now. Okay. Go ahead. Sarge. That was it. <laughs> Jumping on everybody today. <laughs> Uh, I know. I was just going to say, let's get into it with uh, the late pick five at Keeneland today. Let's do it. All right. AJ, you want to start us off? I don't know. I'd kind of rather talk about like Aqueduct. <laughs> okay. That's no, right. Okay. It is Aqueduct opening day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> well, actually, yesterday was, but I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, AJ, it's interesting you mentioned that uh, with Aqueduct. You know, days like today is when people sleep on the other tracks, but. Uh, oh. You know, but then again, it's Breeders' Cup Day, so let, let's talk Breeders' Cup. Let's talk Breeders' Cup. Let's talk Breeders' uh, Cup. Just, we'll start just to throw it out me. there real quick, we have a Sarah and Wendy double today. Yes. With, with Midnight Dioro and Irish Heat Wave. All right, two, two people on the show, obviously, so we're going to go with that. But let's go That's Breeders' nice. Cup uh, right away. And um, – all right, we see, we do have somebody on. Uh, Matt, stay tuned real quick. We're going to bring you on in a couple minutes. But let's talk to um, Sarge about this pick five because we've already given ours out. Yeah, we'll we already respond given to ours these, out. So we don't need to know what so Alex wants to say. Make sure you jump on our YouTube. We have a whole playlist breakdown. All it starts with <laughs> starts with race, race eight, race eight through twelve. So Sarge, <laughs> let's kick off with race eight. Um, I know I have your picks here, but let's let's hear it from you. Well, uh, you know, again, starting with the uh, the Breeders' Cup spread, I don't know if you saw the opener today with Nashville, but uh, Horace essentially set a, a track record. I'm not sure if the Breeders' Cup spread will beat that, but uh, considering how quickly Nashville ran, how easily he made it look, I'm going to assume that today's track is going to be, uh, going to be a lot faster than what we uh, witnessed yesterday. But for this uh, first leg, you know, I think it's – you know what? It's pretty straightforward – because you have uh, Yao Pon for uh, Steve Asmussen, who, who trains at uh, Nashville. Very difficult, uh, obviously, when you, you can pair the, the talent level because Nashville's a young horse and maybe next year. But Yao Pon, for what he's done this year, and I know that uh, even on behalf of my racehorse, we actually – I'm going to back it up even further. Uh, we tried to buy this horse as a two-year-old in training, and this is as my racehorse is just getting uh, lifted off. Sold for two hundred fifty-five thousand as a uh, two-year-old in training in June of last year. Well, he's unbeaten. He's four for four, and I personally just think he's the quickest of the quick. He's my top choice here. Um, but I really like the way Diamond Oops ran last out, and the fact that that horse generally, at least in recent history, will take action. It's a third start back off for respite. So, uh, Diamond Oops, I think, will be hurt from late, and then Collusion Illusion. You know, this is a horse that. Uh, obviously comes in having beaten by CZ Rocket, who is two for two at Keeneland. Uh, the pundits feel that uh, CZ Rocket will not win today, and Collusion Illusion will get the better part of him. My concern after watching the opener, and I know it's just one race, but I think this track is going to be speed conducive, and I think Collusion Illusion is best suited to kind of sit back and make one run. So I really don't like where he's positioned here. So I used him. Uh, I went four deep, but at the end of the day, I, I'm tempted, and I was tempted to uh, to single Yalpon just to kind of get it out of the way and get plenty of coverage uh, the rest of the journey. That's 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 awesome. So so Sarge has a two, three, ten, eleven, 
uh, considering single and Yapon, which I didn't use because I thought he was a little, um, I thought he was young and hasn't raced against anybody, but Sarge, I'm going to listen to you on that. Um, I, 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 I'm a California bias guy apparently nowadays. I don't know why I came from New York, but I I have no idea why all of a sudden I'm CZ rocket fan and everybody, but, um, so Yapon with, I, uh, he's got an Ortiz brother on him. Correct. I believe. Right. Uh, Oh, Rosario. Oh, Oh, even better. Rosario. Sorry. Uh, Same thing. Um, not same thing, but, um, no, so Yopan and I agree with the collusion illusion thing. I think you guys are on the same pace. I don't think did anybody take Yopan? No. Yopan. Yopan. Uh, talking no, like he's a yogurt. Us. I just sound like a yogurt. No. He's gonna go off the favorite though. Don't we agree now with Vakoma gone? Uh, yeah, I agree. Yopan's gonna go off the favorite. I, I, I will say, I will say, you know, based on on sheets, you know, Yopan is a young young three year old, and uh, you know, he paired five and a quarters on the Ragazin sheets. If if he runs that number. The only horse that shows a pattern in there that looks uh, pretty intriguing is the filly, uh, Frank's Rocket. She, she ran a six yeah. last out, progressed from a seven and a quarter, and the spacing of her races is very good. Um, I just think she's going to take too much pressure uh, based on the pace dynamic. As far as the fastest horse in the race, uh, Randy, you're right. Um, it is CZ Rocket. He ran a three and a half last out. And this horse has been an amazing claim. People forget that this horse was gelded. Um, after the first start in the year prior to the Oakland Park race. And this horse just got better and better and better. And if you go back to his numbers as a youngster, uh, this was two years ago, this horse ran a three and a half on the sheet. So it wasn't as if he didn't have the capability. I mean, he was a grade one type horse when previous trainer Al Stahl had uh, CZ Rocket because people are quick to judge and say, oh, Peter Miller, what's this guy doing? The reality is he claimed a horse of back class and obviously found the key and the horse is unbeaten at Keeneland. So, um, yeah. This is a great race to start. It's going to be uh, it's going to be electric. Oh, absolutely! I think this is one of the funnest races there there is. I was looking forward yeah. to it. I obviously. was looking at the uh, Japanese, the the Jasper Prince. Japanese, Jasper. <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's from Japan. Oh, so. okay, that's a Japanese. Um, Jasper person. Prince. Now, the angle I took here, which I thought was was interesting. <laughs> I mean, this is probably a little bit of a stretch, but you look at the pattern of his races. He's like first, sixteenth, first, sixteenth. So I took it that his last race, he got 16th. So this race, maybe he could hit the board. Wait, is that real that he got beat by 90 lengths? It says Sarah 90. Paper. Um, he got beat by 90 <laughs> lengths. I don't know what that is. <laughs> he, he just has the, the auto pattern of PPs here. And he won his You imagine betting a horse that got beat by 90. And he won his next race. What did he go off? 10 to 1? That's a pretty, that's a steal. Well, I mean, he, in, in all actuality, he got pulled up uh, in Tokyo. I, I, well, I hope so. <laughs> I didn't get beat. So it wasn't like he was trying and got beat. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'd hope not. Be nice, right? Right? Be I've nice. never seen. I've never seen ninety links on there, Sarge. I've never seen that. Before. Especially too, it's not like it was a two mile race. It was seven furlongs. He usually says right, like right. Up. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's go on from that. Yeah, All right. So let's, let's move on from that real quick because we have Matt waiting on deck because we have Matt Kimmel coming on who's going to have some questions for Sarge. This is really fantastic. So let's go to your second yeah. race, Sarge, real quick. We have the we have the sprint. Which is awesome. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious to see that Nashville. I thought should have been in this race. Uh, Big Gary actually called his best three, his best sprinters he's seen this year. He said Nashville last week. Nashville vertical threat and volatile, which obviously volatile retired. So it was it was weird that those were mentioned and none of them are in this race. But um, let's go on. Yeah, Sarge, well, you- just just on a side note, uh, the reports are with with uh, vertical threat. He's been nominated to the steel valley sprint at mahoning valley i think that race is right around november 21st and they're kind of weighing options uh, between that a two hundred thousand dollar race at mahoning in ohio or perhaps a twice other than allowance if they can fit it in here in southern california but he worked 59 and change yesterday and the reports are the vertical threat is back on his a game um the second leg of this uh, pick five uh, i personally thought that this race was um not easy by any stretch. I, I think the fact that uh, Kamiko has been kind of a wise guy horse all week, uh, as good as uh, he has looked, the son of Kitten's Joy. He's a three-year-old with plenty of upside to potential for Andrew Balding. Uh, again, I'm kind of a Tens wild guy. Halliday for uh, Todd Pletcher. You know, when you look at that four-star day, you see Got Stormy who came back to win. I'm not going to deny her class, but I feel like there are others in here that have faced better. But as far as the pace dynamic, when you look at the pace of this race and that turf course, 
you know, earlier this week, it was drying out beautifully. And two nights ago, I understand that they watered the turf course. Was it to, uh, you know, kind of help the Europeans coming in? They didn't want it quite as firm. I don't know. But it's a sand-based course mm -hmm. and absorbs the water quite, uh, quite well. So I think pace is going to be key. I like Halliday in this spot uh, as my top choice. Uh, Ivar was one that uh, many were just kind of dazzled by his performance in the Shadwell Turf Mile. He looks like a, a sheer bounce to me. Under the wings of the Chad Brown contingent, I think he's, what, got four in here? Raging Bull, the horse that uh, I believe is the one you may have to look out for with a, a puncher's move at eight to one on the, uh, the morning line. So I went two, eight, 10, 14, and uh, Kamiko on a visual, from a visual standpoint, uh, definitely the horse to beat. But um, my top choice is Halliday for Todd Pletcher, and I'm probably going to be holding my breath throughout. But he is 12 to 1 in the morning line. It's Luis Saez, and uh, he has the keys to the engine. He's won the uh, last three or four on this Son of War front. I want to say two. I want to say two things about that real fast. One, Raging Bull, and you said Puncher's move. That's a great reference right there. Ura. I don't know. I don't know if anybody <laughs> caught that, but I Raging did. Bull, yeah. you know, De Niro, yeah. And also, too, I re I was also on Holiday in this Lana. one too. And I think when you look, um, uh, you know, when you talked about him against Scott Stormy, Scott Stormy was making a move and he fought him off really well to win that yeah. one. That was that. Right. I thought that was very impressive. And I, I, I also Holiday is my my top choice here too. If that yeah, makes you feel any worse about it. It's, it's, it's one of those races. Where, no, I don't. I feel good. I, I know we can coexist. I mean, after all, Kobe, <laughs> great, great Kobe and Shaquille O'Neal could coexist, so why can't we, AJ? Notre Dame, SC. No. What are you Maybe Derek do? Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> that might be you, Derek That's what I, yeah, yeah, I said I'm Derek Fisher. That makes me Derek Fisher. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. And, and Sarah could be Paul Abdul. <laughs> She was a Laker girl. Good call, Sarge. I like the reference. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's quickly move on to race 10. Um, Sarge, I think you have a single that a, a lot of us have. Monomoy. Monomoy girl. Monomoy girl. Or Monomy. Oh, Monomoy. It's Monomoy. Monomoy girl. Um, is that your single still, Sarge? Or are we yes, yes. I, I just... You know, again, I think the biggest question for Swiss Skydiver, you know, can she do it again? I, I said this yesterday to a friend. I said, look, at the end of the day, if Swiss Skydiver were to win the Distaff, Authentic wins a Breeders' Cup Classic, Swiss Skydiver will be horse of the year because she essentially won the head-to-head -head and she stole everybody's heart. And, and rightfully so. She would deserve every ounce of it. So I personally think as confident as I am with Authentic, I know that uh, we've got uh, our guest and uh, partner in Authentic, on deck, but um, this is a, a major stepping stone uh, for not only Swiss Skydiver, but for the industry because if Swiss Skydiver steps up today and she wins the distaff. Um, you know, this is kind of the shot heard around the world. I mean, granted, she won the Preakness. The whole three year old picture this year being pushed back due to the COVID 19 pandemic has changed the dynamic for the three year olds. And I think the three year olds today can have a huge say. And uh, what takes place. But all that being said, uh, Monomoy Girl, I think she is just a genuine article. You know, she overcame a, uh, a terrible illness. She didn't even race in 2019. Yeah. So if they were to give out a, an award at the Eclipse Awards for Comeback Player of the Year, not only if she were to win this race, she would be crowned uh, the ladies champion. But uh, Monomoy Girl, if there's a big upset in the Breeders' Cup Classic and she wins a distaff in style, she could be up for the Horse of the Year Award. So this is an interesting race. I like her just based on the tactical edge. And, you know, she has that win here at Keeneland dating back to the Ashland, which ironically was Brad Cox's first ever grade one win. So think about that trainer in the course of the span of two years and what he's accomplished. He won two races on the card yesterday, two Breeders' Cup races, after having just won his first grade one in the Ashland back in 2018. So I took a stand with Monomoy Girl. I think she can just kind of pick her poison here. Swiss guy ever got the perfect trip, perfect ride, and uh, she's going to have to prove it to me if she wants to uh, win this race. Well, and, and also, real, real quick, Sarge. Why are we echoing? No idea why we're echoing. Who's that? Somebody's echoing. Somebody on? Someone okay. has speakers on. Speaker on? Anybody? No, right. AJ. Um, uh, I was going to say that Swiss skydiver. Okay, it's going now. Um, Swiss skydiver. Ten races this year, Sarge. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I, she's the, she's the 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 consummate 
epitome of a throwback, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and props to pro, props to Kenny McPeak. It, it just again, it, it's just a matter of can can she continue to do that? You know, when you look at the track she's won at Gulfstream, Oakland, Santa Anita, Saratoga, Pimlico. She's danced <laughs> every dance. I I the fact that she got beat at Keeneland doesn't bother me, but it does bother me. Uh, she got beat on the square by Art Collector and uh, Monomoy Girl. You know, this Monomoy Girl is the, the queen of the Midwest. That's what I think. And she may be just the queen of the game, especially now that Midnight Bisu exited uh, stage left. And that that's a big void in this particular race. So you have to kind of weigh the options, right? If you had Midnight yeah. Bisu in this race versus the likes of Monomoy Girl, who would you choose? Most yeah. would probably say Midnight Bisu. But the tactical advantage goes to Monomoy Girl. Oh, oh absolutely. Races on the card. Ollie's Candy has been kind of like the uh, the wise guy selection all week. I just – I really wish for the life of me, and I know she's going into the uh, the sale at uh, phasing at the turn of the week. I, I really wish they uh, would have taken the blinkers off of her because she's had blinkers her whole life. She runs in spots. She She's definitely a good horse to include in your exotics because I think you're going to get every bit of 10 to 1. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, that's that's good. It's a good angle. Okay, let's do the next one real quick. We're gonna bring Matt on before the classic. And yep. uh so let's break down race eleven here. The long jean turf. Yes, yeah, another race. You know, these turf races are wild, aren't they? I mean, uh considering the fact that you know, when you look at the rags and sheets, and you know, I brought this up with uh, a couple of handicapping buddies, and she, you know, at the end of 2019, Magical was retired, it was over. But she came mm -hmm. back. She won three in a row, including the the Gold Cup at the, the Cura, and uh, off the heels of winning the Pretty Polly at the Cura. Um, magical for me, not a play against, but a horse that I think is beatable. I ended up using a total of five here. And uh, Tarnawa uh, with Christoph Sumion, who unfortunately uh, tested positive for COVID, which is just an unfortunate set. You've got a situation yeah, here. Shoot. That, well, yeah, this is it, – it's, it's big because – uh, Tarnawa, who has been another horse that has been training so well uh, and looking so good in, in the mornings, you have a situation now where you have the usual rider for a horse that's tricky to ride, getting the services of Colin King. Colin King, young rider, certainly plenty of upside, but boy, if, if you're seeing six to one on the morning line on Tarnawa, be sure you get that price. Don't take anything less than that. Uh, I did use Tarnawa just as a result of how well the horses look. So I went two, three, five, nine, ten. My top choice is Mogul. That's the Aiden O'Brien, other Coolmore. They're the winningest uh, tandem in this group between the owner and the, and the uh, trainer. And uh, first time Lasix coming off of that uh, uh, pre de Paris win at Longchamp. Uh, the effort last out to this horse being two for five at the distance. That effort was ultra impressive. It was eye catching. He's the uh, son of the great uh, Galileo. I love with this horse position, uh, a race that has. Uh, not a ton of pace, but Mogul's very tactical. Another horse that I thought about shoring up again. I'm tens wild today, starting with uh, Galpo. But uh, two, three, five, nine, ten. I'll give you my long shot is Donja, the German bred uh, a, a son of a uh, daughter of Teofilo, who uh, is four for ten. This horse has been right there on the money, and I expect this horse to charge late at a uh, at a overlay. That horse will be forty or fifty to one. So two, three, five, nine, ten is where I ended up here in the Long Jeans Breeders' Cup turf. Great race, unbelievable betting opportunity. Yeah, that is great. And you gave us a race. five, which most people, I guess, are going to be saying nine for the five. Nine, nine, nine. nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, exactly. Um, but um, also, uh, just real quick before we get into the classic and bring Matt on, um, the Lasix thing is for everybody out there that doesn't know, obviously they can't use Lasix over in Europe. Correct, Serge. And Correct. are we, are we going to no Lasix Breeders' Cup next year? Um, I don't think so. I, I think they're going to stick with the two year old standard. You know, they obviously removed the uh, Lasix with the two year olds this year. Um, I, I would be a little surprised if indeed they did. You know, uh, it would it would surprise me. I, I don't think the game is quite ready for it yet. Um, you know, I have my theories on Lasix, but that would uh, provide a whole. I was, gonna say, yeah, I was going to say, this is a show we will do um, yes. at another day. Yeah. I think it's yeah. a yeah. Veterinarians online, trainers, Hall of Fame trainers, you got it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy uh, debate topic because I think yeah. of the medications out there, so many wild theories. I mean, we're in 2020 now. And, you know, as far as testing procedures and, and whatnot, by the way, they just popped the latch for race number two at Keeneland. So 
got plenty of uh, time to get your wagers in. Uh, should we bring in our guest? <laughs> yes, yes, we're going to mend before the classic. Matt Kimmel. Matt Kimmel, great guy. Matt. Matt, how are you, buddy? Welcome to the show. I'm excited for today's uh, Breeders' Cup races. How are you guys doing today? Good, we're good. good. Thank you for, for coming on. First things first, it's pronounced Kimmel, correct? Kimmel, correct. Like Jimmy right. Kimmel, but one less M. All right. There you I go. love the wall of, what is that? When all they all, are they all winner circle photos? A lot of them are winner circle photos. Uh, two of them include me. The Sarge is in one of them. Uh, what? The horse that we both <laughs> own. My, my first winner was actually a horse that was owned by the Sarge, believe it or not. Wait. Uh, go on. Mm. Wait, you're watching the race. AJ's watching yeah. the race. Uh, that was a terrible, terrible. Oh, oh my that's, god, that's great, oh, that was a Matt. Bad wow, right, we won't go into that because that's bad. Um, all right, uh, let's bring it to a happier topic. Uh, we were talking right. about Matt. No, I know you didn't hear some Porsche fell. Oh, um, yeah, no, it's uh, just a... yeah. So Matt, uh, wait, well, who's the first horse that you had in there with Sarge? Who was the winner? Was, uh, Swiss Minister. Um, uh, it was a uh, horse that won at Santa Anita. Um, we, we, I think we had him for, for a year before he first won. I think he had an injury in the, in the summer. And then he came back about a year later, won at Santa Anita. Um, it was, uh, the, the most exciting win of, of a lifetime until, uh, a, a year or two later when we won the Kentucky Derby, uh, yeah. came quite a long way with the, my racehorse victories. Uh, you know, we, we won a optional claiming race i think it was at santa anita and it was the, the coolest thing ever and i uh, kept buying more and more horses and then uh, this wall of fame built up slowly over time uh most of the pictures are winner's circle pictures uh there's one picture i found at my grandma's house at los al right behind me where she and my grandpa were in the winner's circle in the 80s i stole that picture from my grandma i asked her mm -hmm. whose horse it was she said she doesn't even know yeah. Uh, that's not stealing then. It's just that's not stealing. That's great. That's great. <laughs> oh, welcome, Matt. Matt, thank you. And did yes. you ever have a chance to talk to Sarge throughout this? Have you been able to talk to him? Uh yeah, yeah. I've talked to him at the, the racetrack and uh, a lot of times on Twitter. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Now you can talk to him right now on our show. Oh, we have I mean, Matt <laughs> Matt is uh the one thing I love about Matt is he's a pa passionate passionate uh, not only for the horses he owns but uh, for the game in general and I remember uh, us meeting there at, at Santa Anita and you know you could just kind of kind of sense the uh, anticipation I knew it was not going to stop with Swiss minister and and uh, you know I think Matt's been a, a tremendous uh, spokesperson for my racehorse and in the kind of the age of, of the micro share which uh, is the dawning of a new era if you will um, with that comes a lot of skepticism. You know, but the one thing I can appreciate about my racehorse and what they bring to the table is their transparency. And, you know, Matt's been on various shows and uh, has uh, conveyed that. Uh, Matt, with uh, today um, and authentic, you know, you, you've seen this horse develop. Um, obviously, a horse that could be peaking at the right time. Uh, you're here. Uh, did you choose that you chose not to go out to uh, Kentucky today or was that by choice or by design or what was the case there? Uh, the case was that I live in, in Los Angeles, uh, Kentucky's quite a long ways away. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure, you know, uh, over the last several, uh, weeks and months, if they'd even be allowing any, uh, any fans or owners into the track. So I just, uh, figured I'd watch from home. Um, Authentic has had pretty good luck, uh, with me watching at home. He's won the, uh, the Haskell, the Derby, second in the Preakness, while I've been here at home on, on this couch with this hat on. So <laughs> I don't want to change it up. I, I even uh, figured uh, on the day of the Derby, he won while I wore this My Racehorse shirt on the Preakness. I didn't wear this shirt. So let's go ah. back to the, uh, the winning combo. There you go. I like it. Matt, that's awesome. That is hey, awesome. Uh, so, Matt, I have ahead. a question for you. Obviously, uh, you know, Knowing that we have significant others uh, in our lives, maybe outside of AJ, because he's he's always <laughs> riding solo there. I mean, when you're an SD fan, you tend to ride solo. But but Matt, <laughs> Matt, you know I love AJ, but I love you more. Uh, tell me about your family. 
tell me about the family and, and the support system because I know I'm gonna take off real fast. <laughs> I don't get it because he's, he's got a Kentucky sweatshirt on. Too. I mean, it's a big blue nation. Is it? I don't know. He's yeah, he's the man. This, this I stole this from my old roommate who's from. Oh yeah, I was out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Dealer too. Good work. Sorry. Made a good will uh, yeah. earlier. So Matt, tell us about your uh, your family. Tell us about uh, their support. What do they think about the game? Are you crazy? <laughs> my dad's the one that got me into horse racing. Uh, growing up, he used to take me to uh, Santa Anita and Hollywood Park all the time. Uh, he's uh, from from New York, so he's a big horse racing guy, football, hockey. He's the one that got me into sports. When I was younger, we used to go to the track. You know, he'd, he'd read the form, and I would just bet the four longest shots on the board. I'd like to place like two dollars on all the fifty to one horses, and you know, oftentimes they came in. Um, I still do that. But, uh, yeah, my dad's a real big sports guy. He's the one that got me into sports. I went to uh, grad school. Um, I wanted to be a writer for the Daily Racing Forum, actually. Uh, so I went to grad school for journalism, but I ended up covering, uh, you know, non-horse racing sports instead. Um, my uh, my family likes horse racing. Uh, you know, my dad, uh, like I said, big fan. Um my mom passed away about a year ago. She was uh, in love with following my horses. She always was the biggest fan of me winning. Uh, when Street Band won a grade one, uh, that was my first grade one win. My mom was the most excited person around. My sister thinks it's absolutely absurd that she says I own a horse with a nostril or, you know, uh, nail, horse, you know, the nail of a horse or a little part of the tail. Uh, she, she's not too into it. Um, my uh, my girlfriend loves watching the races when my horses are winning. Um, I've kind of uh, made her become a fan because I let her know if uh, our horses win, she gets sushi. Um, so oh. that's that's, that's, a, that's a rapid reward, right? We win. Yeah, that's, that's, trust me, yeah. you said Sarah's gonna now is gonna hit me up for that, Matt. Thank you. Uh, by the way, yes. Uh, <laughs> It's it's uh it's expensive if we win, but uh, it's it's a uh, you know good uh, incentive to to root for our horses. So, like so Matt, basically, you're saying so you bet all the longest shots on the board when you were growing up. So you were the original Ken Rudolph, and uh, <laughs> we'll just throw that out there. <laughs> Ken, we love you. That's okay. Maybe you heard this. It's yeah. all right. He'll, he'll 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 yell at me in a minute. It's fine, no. uh, but it's not the first time. Matt, um, I do have to say real quick because everybody knows my favorite topic is food. I do appreciate all your food posts and showing me all these restaurants that are basically down the street from us. Are we us. really going here? Now? Oh, we are. What <laughs> I have to say? Well, he brought up sushi, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, Matt. But no, Matt. <laughs> Matt does food posts, apparently. I, uh, I'm a big barbecuer. I oh, yeah. uh, went to the store last night and I figured Authentic's running in the afternoon, so we're making filet mignons for lunch. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, so hey, so what's, uh, what's your address again? I'll be there. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're in LA. You're in LA. We're in LA. Uh, Matt, I'm just saying. Um, I got time to get on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to need your address. We expect you next time. Next time. It might be short notice this time, but next time, Matt, you, you hit us yeah. up. All right. So, Matt, are you, um before we get into it with Sarge, um, unless Sarge you have something else to talk to with Matt, but I want to know, is he going with Authentic before we get to Sarge's picks? Are you cold on Authentic? Are you worried about anybody, Matt, in this race? What do you think about the Classic coming up? Um, well, the, the first uh, thing I did want to ask you guys was I watched your preview show. I want to know if anybody got arrested for that morning line fraud yet. Oh, uh, no, I don't. Not I'm aware. Not, of, not, I'm not, not aware. But Mike again, I don't, think, I don't think anyone's contacted the FBI. Like, I think like he's I, on the like run. I, have told, I think he's on the run. As yeah. he should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like uh, authentic to win. Obviously, uh, I've got the hat on. Uh, probably a little bit of a biased homer. But um, uh, I've played several different tickets. Authentics on, on top on probably just all of them except one or two. Um, I, uh, I got authentic soloed in the pick five, uh, you know, whenever my horses are running in the fifth race or the last race, I like to solo them and try to try to get there to, to root for them to win and build up the anticipation. But I think he's got a real good chance to win aside from, uh, you know, being a, uh, you know, biased Homer on the situation, uh, you know, um, he won the Derby second in the Preakness won the Haskell. So, um, and I think he's got just as good of a chance as anybody, regardless of the the odds. Uh, you know, he's got to uh, get out there to the lead and 
Uh, that that's obviously his game. So if he's out there on the lead, hopefully he has a lead at the top of the stretch and uh, can hang on to the end. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. AJ picked him. Obviously, Sarge picked him. I picked him second. I'm going to be that guy. I picked him second to Tom Stata, but I, I, I'm going for him. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I picked him second for uh, to uh, by my standards. By my standards, Sarah has. So you're going to single him then. in the pick five. Yeah, I've got him on top in uh, trifectas, uh, some superfectas. Um, and, uh, I like, uh, you know, uh, authentic and maximum security to, to round out the exact, uh, I think if anybody's going to beat authentic, it, it'd be maximum security. Uh, just, you know, the two of them are always first or second. They, they've never, in my opinion, finished worse than second. Um, Do you, let me ask you, Matt, and I'm going to have Sarge chime in. I think he might've told us this before, but I, I wanted to hear you both your comments on this maximum security and authentic go around the turn. Do you think this could be a weird speed duel for Bob Baffert that might hurt both those horses? I think Authentic will be out on the lead by himself. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, maximum security just can't catch him. Uh, right. You know, he, he finished uh, second in the last race and got passed in the stretch. But I, I think Authentic uh, will, will go out to the lead. And, uh, you know, I like the way the uh, – the two races have uh, held with the uh, you know front runners so far, uh, so I'm hoping uh, that Authentic's out there and that nobody can catch him. All right, no, no, it's fantastic. And and Sarge, I want to ask you real quick. I call it a rush to the turn. Is that a horse racing term? I know it's a dog racing term because I used to train greyhounds. When they sit in the box sometimes and they rush to the turn faster than anybody else in the first turn. Authentic has that. Is it called a rush? Number one, because I keep saying that word. This might be wrong. No, it, it's 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 fine. Uh, I mean, I think in this case, it is going to be a rush to the turn. I mean, considering where they start, right at the uh, apex of the top of the stretch, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a blessing, but it kind of isn't in a sense that, uh, you know, what will happen is when you get that first, the, the kind of the quick run into a first turn in a normal, you know, given situation, say, for example, in a mile race or in a mile and a quarter race, they can start way back in the street like they would at Santa Anita. The way they're starting on the turn there, oh, boy, those first uh, couple of jumps today are going to be crucial. And maximum security is not a horse that is a rated, rateable type in a sense that, yeah, he can be rated, but he doesn't run his best doing that. This is difficult because of the fact that you have the, the multiple ownership group with Authentic, with My Racehorse, Spendthrift, Matiquette, Starlight. And then, of course, you've got maximum security with Gary Mary West. Got two horses and what's going to give? Do I think at the end of the day that Authentic is a faster horse than Maximum Security? Visually he is, but Maximum Security is just one of those horses where you're going to put it in boxing terms, he smothers you. So I think the whole point is Authentic just has to be sure. If Authentic goes back and he breaks like he did in the Derby, he's going to be in trouble. So you can say, well, he won the Derby. Reality oh, is wow, yeah. they, they gave him the Derby on a silver platter that particular day. They did. Everyone took back, uh, including uh, Tiz the Law, who finally kind of came out of the woodwork and went after him. But Maximum Security, he's a smother. Smoking Joe Frazier, he wants to come out, he wants to smother you early. Uh, Authentic is just a free-running horse. Um, kind of reminiscent, you know, I remember being a youngster. Uh, it was the last uh, big boxing match that I went to with my father um, prior to his uh, passing back in 85. It was the Hagler Hearn three-round war. Mm -hmm. that, that first quarter mile today, is reminiscent of what I think is going to take place between authentic and maximum security. And I know Baffert in his mind is going to probably just tell the jocks, hey, play the break. Whoever gets the break, the other just has to be patient. But the reality is those two, they could get in a ding dong and don't discount Tis the Law. People just uh, seem to think that Tis the Law is not that fast. But Manny Franco gone down there in post position number two. He knows he's got to come away from there. He's got a gun. That horse worked 59 and one on Halloween. This is going to be an interesting race because what gives at the start is key. And with that uh, quick little snippet to off the turn, you've got a long straight and somebody is going to get rank and it could be authentic. I hope not, but um, you know, he may take him coast to coast, but it won't be easy. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a question, Sarge right now. And this is why I think this is such a benefit, obviously among other things to have you on the show is and I think everybody wants to know this question from 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 a trainer, former trainer, um, future trainer as well. With Sarge, you have 
you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure Matt's you wondering. Are- did you get the Powerball or something? You're not telling me. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm, uh, you guys, will, this will be released soon. Um, but uh, no, but uh, Matt, I'm sure is asking the same, wondering the same thing and everybody out there. So if you're Bob Baffert right now, Sarge, you have these three horses. Honestly, what are you telling them? What do you think Bob Baffert's telling them? And what are you telling them? And maybe it's different. Maybe I'm sure it's probably the same. What are you telling them with these three horses where two of them could – Maybe take each other out of the race. It's it's, uh, it's it's a play the break scenario. I mean, you literally cannot tell a uh, Hall of Fame rider Johnny Velasquez to take back. And we know that Authentic, who has just trained unbelievably well, you know, when you hear Bob Baffert talk over the last seven days, it's authentic and improbable. He he's been very kind of under the uh, under the close to the vest with maximum security. And, and as I was saying in the in the preview show that we discussed in reference to maximum security, if you're going to bet maximum security, this is this is the day you bet because you're going to get value. Look at his odds the last three races: fifty cents on a dollar, forty cents on a dollar, forty cents on a dollar. Morning line seven to two, you're going to get four to one today on maximum security. As far as Baffert, um, when it comes to having one horse in the race, yeah, he's very instructional as, as far as saying, "Hey, take it to him." But in this case. How, how can you say one or the other? How can you tell Luis Saez, hey, take back of Authentic? If Authentic gets an easy lead, I can tell you right now, Gary Mary West are not going to be happy. Whereas if Maximum Security gets an easy lead, Team My Racehorse, Spendthrift, Mattaquette, Starlight, they're going to be, what was that all about? So mm-hmm. um, I really do think it comes down to being a rider's race. And I usually say that when there's only five horses in there and it's generally a sprint, rarely at a mile and a quarter with a field of 10. So um, – it's it's exciting. I think uh, tis the law. As much as I was a play against three or four days ago, the more I look at the sheets and his pattern, the fact that he's six for eight in his career, he might be he might be seven to two or four to one at the end of the day. I think improbable is going to end up being the favorite, and I think he's going to be closer to nine to five when it's all said and done. And Tom's the top is probably going to be closer to nine to two, four to one because so many people think that uh, he's the horse. He's seven years of age. You never had a horse at that stage of the game winning. It'll be a great story, not for us, obviously, with Authentic, but um, I think the three-year-old told the keys to, to winning here. Yeah, which is a difference usually in most things. And so let's get right to it. Uh, so, so Sarge, uh, give everybody a picks, which we heard before with the classic real quick, and then we'll have Matt ask you questions about the Breeders' Cup and anything you know, going on, Matt. So, uh, Sarge, who do you have here exactly? Okay, so I, I did end up, uh, obviously, Authentic is my top choice. We, we talked about that. But I ended up using just three horses, uh, Tom's to top. Uh, you know, again, I, I think from a visual, physical standpoint throughout the week, he's looked phenomenal and improbable. Uh, you know, you have a horse that's peaking uh, uh, at the right time, and that's how I feel about authentic. I, I You know, I'm, I'm a little concerned about Tiz the Law, though, as far as a horse that I maybe could have added at the end of the day because Tiz the Law is out to get, uh, get revenge on authentic. And I mentioned that uh, Silver Platter Kentucky Derby. Nobody went after him. Tesla Law tried to, but, uh, you know, again, as far as pace dynamic, it looks like it could get pretty wild that first uh, quarter of a mile today. So I went 3D. Tesla Law could end up being in the ideal spot. Joel Rosario, I think, on tap for a, a huge day. Uh, Yalpon, of course, a key horse to begin that pick five sequence. Absolutely. Yalpon and uh, obviously Monomoy Girl putting a lot in that pick five. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, so so for Sarge, this pick we're going to put out there uh, 50 cents, $120 ticket. But um, if Monomoy Girl wins, I can't see how you can really lose here. Well, it's the Bridges Cup. I don't know. You yes. Know, <laughs> right. Let's face it. Um, so, Matt, let's bring it to you. Um, you have uh, Sarge here right now. Any other races you want to ask him about or um, anything you want to talk to him about, let me know. If you want to ask me a question, like where I got my hat, that's fine. <laughs> or if AJ is going to you know, be still around after USC gets beat today. What, what oh, do you want to do, Matt? <laughs> well, well, where did you get that hat? Oh, I ordered it online because it's from our comic from, book. From the Halloween Halloween spirit. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that's probably what it was. He's a, he's a samurai cowboy. Yes, or that's right. that was the character. Yes, the samurai yeah. cowboy. Well, he's uh, not the he's AJ. not the samurai cowboy. Let's get one cowboy. thing straight here, real quick. Whoa, 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 whoa! AJ's gonna jump. He was he was samurai cowboy's like you know doofy sidekick. 
Yeah. Oh, that his, name was? his name was Doofy Sidekick? It Doofy, Doofy Sidekick. Sidekick. Yeah. Oh, right. my Lord. Oh. AJ's changed it. I wrote no. it, but he's changed oh it, goodness. apparently. Yeah. Um, I do want to give a quick uh, shout out real quick to uh, D rest in our chats. He's keeping us updated on the jockeys yeah, so, uh, at Keeneland. And, and he yeah. did report some good news is that they were all able to walk away. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Bad just, spill. Thank you for, for doing that for us. Bad spill happened. We don't like to talk about that, but it is a fact of racing and all jockeys jockeys, I guess walked away. Cause I was going to have to say like, this changes a little bit of a dynamic without these jockeys, but it seems like they all walked away. Hopefully they're um, hopefully everybody's okay. I don't know. I didn't even see it, but I saw your guys' reaction, so I'm sure it wasn't good. Um, but yeah, thank you, D-Rest, for telling us that all the jockeys walked away, and um, we'll just keep going on with what we're doing, because we have to. Uh, Matt, so Matt, what do you got? What kind of questions, besides my hat? Sorry, in the uh, first race, we saw a track record fall. What do you think the uh, odds are of the track record falling in the Classic? It looks like American Pharaoh's got the the record at two minutes flat. You think Authentic could wire the field in a quicker time? Well, I mean, obviously the track record uh, is one that based on the early times that we saw with Nashville and that second race, what did Sleepy Eyes Todd end up going in? 22 and change, I think it was, if I remember correctly. Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't see a track record. I'll tell you why. I think the pace flow of today's race, I think they're going to go quick early. And although I, I'm not saying speed cannot win, I think they're going to end up going slower late. It's just going to be too grueling at, at a mile and a quarter in distance. So I don't think they break the track record today, but I think the time will be below two minute one. So 201 or less today would be the, uh, the final time for me. 121.77 that time for Sleepy Eyes, Todd. Wow. And that's, I mean, that's, that, that's rolling. And that was a point that I made to someone, you know, we went through yesterday and obviously, I, I didn't see the news, unfortunately, on the horse that uh, went down. I know there was an inquiry, which there usually is when there's a spill. I mean, the track record, uh, Matt, is 121-1. and one. So, I mean, yes, That's it fun. could be in jeopardy, but those were one-turn races. But uh, the fact that the track was where it was yesterday, did it really have to get that fast overnight? Makes you wonder. Mm. Yeah, no, it does. Good question. Matt, Anything? What, what else you got for Sarge? What do you think, uh, regardless of who wins today, do you think the winner races again after today? Um, well, that's a very good question. Um, you know, I think as far as looking at the field, the horse that I think is most in jeopardy of retirement is Maximum Security. But if Maximum Security wins, he won't retire. Um, as far as authentic, no, he's not going to retire. Um, improbable, well, he's going to be a newly turned five-year-old, lots of money to be made. The only horse that I would say, if he won and were retired, tis the law. That's that's the only horse that I could see because they. Wow. Yeah. What about what about Tom? Tom's there. Tom. Uh, he he he's got a few more years in him, right? Is he gelded? Yeah. Is he gelded? No. No, he's he's intact. He's intact. I mean, he could he could be, but it would you know he is a son of Smart Strike, and you know Smart Strike left us a few years ago, but. Yeah, I guess. I mean, consider the fact that it is uh, uh, Al Stahl. What's really crazy when you think about it, though, he's seven years of age, and you look at his career, he's only had 19 starts, but yet they've continued to come back to him. So, you know, you might bring up a good point. Maybe they figure, hey, we won the Breeders' Cup Classic. He went 12 for 20. He landed on top, and he's probably met uh, the apex of his stallion value. He's going to be an eight-year-old. So, you know, maybe it is time. Might be right. Yeah. Now, with improbable, is that after a win or a loss, you think he, he could retire? I personally think with improbable, again, you, you have a situation here where improbable is by City Zip. We lost City Zip about two years ago, I think it was. So the value in the breeding shed, I mean, Windstar, they're one of the most savvy groups when it comes to standing a stallion, of course, out of side of Spendthrift, who I think are, are, are mad geniuses as far as their creativity and, and props to B. Wayne Hughes. But uh, – when I look at improbable, I see a horse can be nearly turned five. Years. I, I think Bob Baffert has a lot of say in that. So if maximum security gets beat, you're not going to see him again. Uh, improbable gets beat today. I think he's probably 60, 40 to come back next year. Authentic gets beat today. He will come back next year. Tis the law gets beat today. I think he's 60, 40 to come back. Tom's the top. If he gets beat, probably going to retire. If he wins, he may nearly turn eight year old, could retire, but 
I don't know why we're talking about retirement because I'm far from earning any social security. Yeah. I can tell you that. That's, pretty, that's a pretty good question, though. Um, and one day we'll get into another topic. We'll begin to like what the ages of horses are compared to like how it is as an athlete, as a human. And we'll 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 talk about that. I think mm -hmm. that's an interesting one as great. well. Right. It's seven yeah. years old, Tom Brady, or is it actually like thirty? I don't know. Yeah, but we know we know that Tom Brady's underneath. He's he's not human. He's no. It's, he's <laughs> He's a robot. That TV12 <laughs> program. He's not real. He's not real. Um, but uh, okay, so so Matt, uh, what, what else? For, what else for Sarge before we get into the next race here? What else for Sarge? Sarge, what do you think the uh, American horses are? Chances are against the turf horses from the the Europe. I don't really follow the European horses very much, but you know, I always hear they're they're better than us on the turf. What what's your stance on that? Um, you know, I think in, in light of the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, you know. There are, there are horses that we didn't see come from Europe. Uh, when you look at the turf races today, namely the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare turf, I think the Americans have a, they have a tremendous advantage there. Tremendous. I think that's, that's, in fact, the best opportunity for an American horse to win. Rushing Fall has been the smoke horse uh, as far as just the percentages of Chad Brown, horses coming off the win, getting a 30 to 60-day uh, uh, respite or 60 to 120 day respite. Uh, so that's race seven. I will say in the Breeders' Cup mile, while I did take a, a run with Halliday, 12 to 1 in the morning line, when you look at the uh, the horses that are coming over, Kamiko is definitely the one I think you're going to have to beat in that case. But considering where, where the numbers are in the morning line, Uni, uh, American type, so I think the Americans actually have a better look this year, all in all. And for whatever reason, maybe as a result of the uh, the COVID pandemic and the travel restrictions, the most uh, probable winner of the European contingent is in the Long Jeans Breeders' Cup turf. It's magical for most, but not for me, Mogul. I, I think the, the Euros dominate that race. Yeah, Channel Maker's going to try to steal away with it. United, you can't argue that horse consistency, but um, – this is a kind of a funny year, Matt, just in, in, in general, as far as uh, because of those travel restrictions. So Europeans, I think they're vulnerable. Uh, race 11, probable. Do you think that's a track bias, Sarge, with the Europeans at a different track over here compared to like, because I mean, you look at Del Mar's grass compared to, and you know me with my, I hate when dirt kicks up in the grass because I get mad about it. Um, yeah. Uh, don't you think the Europeans would have more of a chance at a course like Del Mar or Keeneland because it's more like what they have? Is is there something to that? Well, Del Mar and Keeneland are to me are two different turf courses in time. Yeah, and I think the fact that Keeneland, if you noticed yesterday, there was a lot of kickback on that turf course. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the American horses aren't quite accustomed to that. Um, but one thing I will say about the turf course, I feel, as I mentioned the word that I received that they had watered that turf course a couple of nights ago, whereas like three days ago, turf course is firm and drying out nicely, but it's a sand based course. So it should dry out relatively quick. In this case of Keeneland. Yes. The Europeans I think have a better chance of mm. making their presence felt in that case, because the, the Americans as a general rule, um, the horses that are racing on the turf here in the U S namely, uh, you know, throughout the year, they like to hear their feet rattle. Now, granted, we saw at per Aunt Pearl win yesterday. Uh, granted, she's been based here in the United States for Brad Cox, but uh, she has a, a European line and pedigree. I think she could run on broken glass. But, uh, you know, the key in those races, especially when you're looking at Keeneland, is pace dynamic. And that's why I ended up with Halliday, who is a 12 to 1 in the morning line, because I think that horse has a chance uh, to walk the dog in that particular race. Channel makers of speed as well. But I think, you know, when you look at those two horses, uh, you know, in race 11, you look at channel maker. I just, he's a six year old and I feel like there's better horses in there. All right. That's, that's awesome. Uh, Matt. So shoot, go ahead. Uh, quick question, Sarge. I got another horse running at Del Mar today since we mentioned Del Mar. What do you think uh, her chances are today in a maiden race? Moonlight. Moonlight. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Love her. Um, you know, in looking at the, the race, as far as I'm curious about the weather, um, you know, I know that it was raining this morning down there, but they had a, a light seal. I don't think it was an ultra tight seal, but it was a seal on the racetrack, uh, frost area for Bob Baffert. I think, you know, you know, the drill, uh, coming off of that uh, smart to debut in moonlight. Dora was given some time 
as a result of having gotten sick after that race on August 2nd. She was scratched on August 30th. But I love where she's drawn. I think she's going to be involved early in, in looking at the uh, the clocker reports. You know, obviously the Baffert's training well. The McCarthy, uh, Nazradine, the five, at six to one, debuted nicely. But I don't like playing horses that break slowly come running in their debut. I, I absolutely despise them in career start number two because uh, inevitably they're over bet. So I, you know, cross our fingers, Matt. I, I think this filly is something special, and I think she's only going to get better with added real estate. She's definitely not a six furlong horse, but uh, I fancy her chances today. And, you know, as, as, as tough as it is to beat Bob Baffert, you know, the horse that beat her last out was the other Baffert uh, in private mission, daughter of intermission. It looks like she has a bright future. It's a good race. It should give us a good barometer on what the future holds. But I know uh, Mandela Camp has been uh, ultra, ultra high on this filly. Yeah. And, and Matt, if you're looking at the same things we are, which I'm sure you are because uh, we have part of that horse too, um, is uh, she looks fantastic. She looks like a little shit that just digs. She was like a yeah. little girl that just digs. Yeah. Like, I, well, I, I think she's going to be something special. I, I, well, I, again, I, you know, when you say, you know, she's, she's one of those fillies that she's actually developed. I mean, we, having looked at her as a yearling and seeing her as a two-year-old, she's checking those boxes that you'd like to see uh, from a horsemanship uh, perspective. I mean, there was a point, I think, about four months ago where I was sitting around with uh, Joe Moran and Joe Mishak. We were watching the video, and she kind of gave us the impression that she was a little turfy, which it's not nothing bad to be a good turf horse, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, considering the fact that, uh, you know, her mother – Venetian Sonata was a debut winner on synthetic and she was by Bernardini out of a Carson city mayor. Uh, you're saying, God, I hope we can get them. I, I think she, again, the talent level is there. And I think she's going to prove she can run on anything. Absolutely. And I, I have, I have a question for Matt in a little bit, but first question I want to ask is um, Jay, one of our guys out there who's always involved. How many euros won yesterday? Does anybody know that offhand? Zero. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zero. Right. The only, the only horse, the only horse on the card yesterday um, that won. I mean, obviously it was Future Stars Friday. So as you know, uh, the Americans generally will have a little bit of an edge in that that department. But uh, Fire Will, of course, winning the uh, juvenile turf. Uh, Aunt Pearl, she's Irish bred, but she's U.S. based and unbeaten. Them. Yeah, absolutely. And I had one more before I ask Matt a question real quick. Um, I have one more that uh, somebody asked me that I thought was a really interesting thing, and we can be quick on it, but it was a very interesting question that somebody wanted me to talk about on the show, which was, uh, it was a European, uh, uh, somebody who bets horses overseas, and they oh, bet, yeah, what's it called? Lay, a lay bet. lay bet. They bet horses to lose and not win. So basically he puts three horses, and if they all come off the board, you get a certain amount of money. And all he wanted to know was, would we make that bet? A horse a lay bet? Are yeah. you asking me or are you asking Matt? <laughs> I'm asking you and everybody. everybody. Well, you, you and would you make a lay bet that you couldn't? A horse Absolutely. To I mean, that's that's part of the, the exchange, you know, Betfair exchange. And that was the frustration for me as a, a former trainer. Uh, when we sat down with the, the horseman groups uh, back in the day, you know, they were against the perception. Uh, when you talk about the play or lay. So essentially in the exchange, you could actually go in there and lay odds. Like say, for example, if we had the Breeders' Cup Classic today, and let's say all of us, uh, you know, Matt, Sarah, AJ, Randy, we're all account holders at Betfair. So I go in and I'm offering up, let's say, Tis the Law at four to one. Now, people would look at that as value, but then you look at maximum security. I'm going to give you maximum security at six to one. Point is, I'm laying in a sense that that horse, I'm saying that horse can't win. So you have an opportunity to play into the exchange. Now, I know that there are head-to-head -head wagers, but the point being is when you lay, often we say when you have a favorite, let's say today Monomoy Girl is eight to five. Are you going to play or lay Monomoy Girl eight to five, knowing that Swiss Skydiver's in there? Well, if you're laying, then essentially you're saying, I'm going to give you every bit of that, but probably more. So I like the concept. Unfortunately, with the standard in U.S. racing, everybody has this issue with uh, perception. I'm going to say real quick that the only thing I think the U.S. probably has a problem with, which I would be the one, because I'm always all about the conspiracy theorist in me, is I think it's easier to fix a race to come in last or off the board than it is to win the race. And I think that could be the problem. 
Yeah, but then again, I, I think that if you're watching a race visually, you have uh, a much easier time of it seeing what's going on. Because I mean, if you're you're literally stiffing and holding a horse back, it's, it's you're right. It's you can tell. You can tell. Okay. You, you know when somebody, but you know when somebody's not trying. I mean, I, I've okay. seen your test scores, AJ. I've seen your test scores. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he was trying. He was trying. That was him uh, trying. All right, so all so right. real quick, because I know Sarge has to go at eight thirty, and we have his picks. But I want to ask real quick, and I want to hear uh, Sarge's reaction to this. So Matt, you own a bunch of horses, so I'm going to ask you two part question: Who's your favorite horse going right now of your horses? And then I'm going to ask a question, and you have to think really carefully on this one: oh, Who's your favorite trainer of all time? Oh, um, <laughs> my my favorite horse. Right now has to be authentic. He's, you know, in the Breeders' Cup Classic uh, running today. My uh, my second favorite horse, who recently been surpassed, is going to be uh, sold at Keeneland tomorrow. Street Ben. Um, you know, I have all these horses, but uh, you know, when when they win Grade Ones, it kind of kind of take uh, top priority. Uh, you like all those Breeders' Cup race courses, huh? That's what you do, Matt. I see how it is. You just, uh... Street Band won, uh, won the Cotillion. I think I wore my Street Band hat every day for a month or two. Nice. Love it. That's awesome. <laughs> this, nice. this, this hat has uh, been, been worn more often, but uh, I think I'll have to do a throwback tomorrow with the Street Band hat because uh, all right. she's going to be taking the stage tomorrow. There you go. Getting sold tomorrow. Street band. That's interesting. Okay. You didn't answer the second question and I'll give you a part B to that question. Favorite TVG personality. And it could be the same answer. I'm just saying. I throw you a softball. It's definitely not me. So I'm not worried about that. He's thinking about it already. Come on. Honestly, be honest, be honest, Matt. I mean, we're friends, so I don't have to be your favorite person. Well, my favorite, Oh, he, oh, he oh, quit on the answer. No. Oh, my God. Oh, unbelievable. Talk about that. He just was like, I can't say this out like, loud. Nope, I can't do yeah. this. So yeah, I'm I'm oh, this. That was man. totally technical issues. That was wow. kind of funny, though. I have no idea why he just did that. Oh, that was yeah. funny. The timing of that was <laughs> oh. Here he comes. He's coming right, back he's coming on. Back. Let's get him back real quick. Matt. Uh, if you don't want to answer the question, wow, no, if you don't want to I answer mean, the question, it's said fine. no, but that's all right. It was joking I, partly, but I do want to know who's your favorite trainer. You you have a horse out there, you know, with your horses. Who do you want, trainer? I thought the Sarge kicked me off right there when I was getting ready to answer the uh, trainer question. Uh, I was saying that I don't know if uh, I got disconnected on my end or your or you guys kicked me off, but I was saying my no. my favorite trainer is uh, which, whichever one's winning the race for me that day. Uh, that's a good answer. Way to be Quite political. Quite yeah, way to be political. Yeah. Matt, Matt came up running for president yeah. in a couple yeah. of years. <laughs> he might be running this week. We that's the know. way this election is uh, yeah, going. Absolutely. He might win. Matt here, uh, yeah. But okay, so um, Matt, um, so let's let's just say right now, uh, Matt, any other questions right before uh, Sarge is going to go in a couple minutes? We're going to go in a couple minutes before the Breeders' Cup. Anything else you have for Sarge or any of us? I don't know why you'd want to ask us a question, but uh, let's say, let, let, throw it out there now. When do you think uh, we'll be uh, all allowed back at the tracks in uh, California, Sarge? Do you have any insight on that or no? I tell you, in light of the current environment and the situation, I think we just better count our blessing that, that racing is going to march forward, you know, with the uh, the COVID van pandemic. I mean, uh, the good news is uh, in Australia, I know in uh, Victoria, I believe they had announced that, you know, their cases had dropped and things were going back to normal. So I guess we're kind of in the midst of a second wave here. If I were to say, knowing that we're headed into the winter months and the Breeders' Cup is taking place today and there's no major event coming up until January, I think they're going to err on the side of caution until at least January of uh, 2021. It's unfortunate, but, um, you know, I would much prefer to have racing with no fans and no racing at all. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. I know so, we're all keeping our fingers um, crossed that we so, would like to uh, be back at the track. But Churchill is running with 25%. Um, really awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah, which is I, Ed DeRosa. We've Good thing some. they waited till after the Derby, huh? <laughs> well, or that, or they're doing it while the Keeneland's going on an hour away and there's nobody at the Breeders' Cup. I don't know. Well, but, but who am I? Who am I? I well, we're just keeping right? our fingers crossed that it's, I'm hoping it's a sign of things slowly going to the next level of being able to open. Well, again, again, with the, the, the whole political aspect of things and the madness of, of the election, 
you know, look, COVID is real. And I highly suggest that, you know, you, you be vigilant, you, you, you stay safe, you don't do things that are, that are ridiculous and put you and yourself and, you know, people that surround you in, in harm's way. But um, all of that being said, I'm hoping for better months ahead and uh, I can see some light at the, the end of the tunnel. But one thing's for sure, Matt, when you, you do want to get out to the track and you want a special pass, I'll be sure to get you in there, my friend. I, I was going to say, too, can I bring my Swiss minister photo and get it autographed? Oh, come on, man. Absolutely. Sure, I'll I mean, do that. Sure that. You oh, yeah, can sign that photo. But, uh, <laughs> no, no I, I remember that day vividly. And, and you know, I, I noticed he was in last night at Remington Park and Scratch. But I tried to tell Steve Asmussen the only month that he wins – over the last three years is the month of April. That's <laughs> that's when he wins. It's crazy. I think he won two races in April this year, right? Because I was I was uh, watching TVG in the background while working, and I heard all of a sudden uh, I didn't even know he was running. I heard and Swiss Minister wins the race. I was like, what? <laughs> Somehow crazy. Missing it. It, it is crazy. He won two in April this year. He won in April of 2019. He won in April of 2018. <laughs> Prior to that, his only win he had before that was in October of 2017. So wow. uh, it's all about April. I'm going to say, if authentic, what if an authentic April coming up? Hey, if authentic wins today, maybe we can uh, pony our money together, go back and claim him, and, and bring him back in April. <laughs> and then get rid of him in May. Yeah, get rid of him in May. Just repeat every year. No one's gonna. You're not. He's gonna be like a, a hundred thousand dollar claimer in April because they're like, yeah. no, you're not getting him right now. Oh. No, exactly. Stock, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, the trends. All right. Well, okay. So everybody, Sarge, I know you got to go. You have a busy day. Check the Sarge out. Well, tell him where you, Sarge, where you can see. Sarge, real quick before you go. Hold on. Oh, just one. Did you just really do that? Yes. I know. I know. I just want to ask because I mean, the first Breeders' Cup race starts the next race. What's real quick your thoughts there? Well, I mean, we, as we talk here, uh, Matt brought up the point about how fast the track has run. The first couple of races were 33 minutes. Uh, Sarah Getty Impress is going to be all out. Um, she's going to be guns out because this is her last race in her career. The, in the history of the Philly Mare Sprint, the Breeders' Cup, it's been conducive to horses that are stalker closer types. So immediately you say, well, it's a speed track today. Are you going to bet Gamine? Yes. I think Gamine gets back on her A game today. But I think Bell's the one as the horse is going to be heard from late. I like her at five to one. Yeah, I like her too. All right. There you go. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that was Sarge, thank you so much. Yes, Sarge. Catch Sarge on the quarters tonight, correct? Yes, quarters tonight. We've got the uh, the town policy. I know you're thinking town policy. What is that? $25,000 race. But tomorrow night, tomorrow night, we got the, uh, the Super Derby, $1 million event. And uh, that's at Los Alamitos. We had a big million dollar race last weekend. So be sure to tune in. Look. Matt, I know you're a 24 hour seven horse racing guy, but uh, when six o'clock rolls along, you got to kind of tone it down and take care of the family. I love your wall of fame, but above all, I love your passion for the game. You uh, you epitomize what uh, being a horse racing, not only a fan, but an owner and a great ambassador for the sport. Yes, Matt. Yes, Matt. Absolutely. He's never said anything like that to us. Nope. Ladies right. and gentlemen, we're not going. See Sarge. you later. Uh, Matt, you can stay around with us. We'll sign it off with you if you want. Sarge, always Sarge, a pleasure. Catch him on the quarters we'll tonight. Today. We'll see you in the winter circle, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your day. Safe travels and uh, make a lot of money so we can go uh, invest in some more My Race horses. Hoorah. Uh, Hoorah. Oh. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you, Sarge. Thank you, Sarge. All right, Matt. So um, now you're left with us. We're going to sign off in a I'm minute. Sorry. He's um, going to cut out again. He's, he's just so I want to say, Matt, Matt, any questions for us? No, yeah. never mind. We're going to go no. now. Um, no, Matt, uh, well, yeah, no, I'd be interested to hear up. what Matt's got in the next one. Well, as we st we're starting the Breeders' Cup just now, guys. All right, I, mean, I think this is big. Are, like, that's, Matt, what, what's your thoughts here? The first Breeders' Cup race. I uh, I played a pick four last night, and I soloed Serengeti Empress. Mm, wrong. I, I used to kind of not like her because she would beat Street Band, but uh, now, you know, I got no horse in the race, and uh, I'd like to see her go out with a win, um, knowing, knowing it's her last race, and she was kind of, uh, you know, our, our rival for, for so long in, in some of those big, uh, you know, Philly races last year and early this year. I did that for you, Matt. By the way. <laughs> nice hat. <laughs> <laughs> where, where you get the hat? 
Oh, there it is. Oh, there we all, there it is. Sarah's the only one. I didn't get right. it. Uh, I'm, uh, I wasn't that um, cool. No, but uh, okay. So Sarah Gary Empress and the races. Any yeah, other? Any sing other big? Uh, big? Uh, what do you? What do you got? Do you have on? any other um, big singles uh, throughout the day? That besides obviously Serengeti. The, uh, the only singles I had today were uh, Serengeti Empress, Authentic, and Monomoy Girl. Uh, I got knocked out of the pick five in the opening pick five, but I hit the first and third leg. So the second leg uh, didn't didn't get through there. So yeah, shoot. Um, uh, hopefully uh, my my late pick five comes through because uh, you know if I uh, if I win, I'll uh, certainly buy some of those new my race horses. There's a few too many available right now. Right? Yeah. yeah. I need, need to get a need to get a pick five to uh, to get all of them. Um. D rest, I will ask hot, that tip, hot tip for you. No hot tip for you. Dan Blacker's got a horse in these upcoming my race horses. And that's AJ's and, best friend. I don't know if you knew and that. And that's my best friend. So no. I didn't I didn't know that, but I guess I'll have he to. He doesn't get, know it either. He doesn't he know it either, either but Dan he is my best friend. He doesn't know that either. So <laughs> um, uh, this is why AJ is not allowed to live in LA. Uh, who do, uh, so yeah. Matt, Matt, do you have vertical threat? I have vertical threat. Yeah, I was uh Real excited to see him go to the Pat De Mile, and uh, you know, uh, didn't didn't uh, didn't come through. But I think uh, you know, I got two vertical threat photos up behind me. I guess uh, yeah, totally. yeah, zoomed in to see which ones are in there. But uh, I like to see what he does next. Uh, you know, I, I originally thought uh, you know uh, if he would have stayed at Del Mar, he he might have won that. Uh, he might be there today. He may be running today. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, what was it? The uh, uh, the race at Del Mar was it? It's easy rocket that he got scratched from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one he got scratched from. Yeah, that, yeah right. I think uh, he he might have taken that one, but uh, we'll see how he does going forward. Uh, you know, that was the uh, first my race horse horse that I've had that that went from a maiden winner to a stakes winner. So that was real exciting. I think uh, he's got a good future ahead of him. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, he can. Become a graded stakes winner. I think it'd be real cool to see a my racehorse go from uh, maiden to stakes uh, winner, graded stakes winner. Because uh, you know the other ones we've had uh, were already kind of established uh, before they, you know, yeah. won. Well, he's, got, he's, got, he's got what it takes. He just ran a bolt yesterday. You saw that. Yeah. It's fast enough. Um, they have two horses today going. By the way, did you know that, Matt? They have two horses. What's the other one? They Illusion, just bought Illusion Illusion. Illusion. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I thought you meant uh, of ones that uh, have already been available for. Uh, yeah, no, not available. AJ, one of AJ's AJ's favorite sprinter in California is Collusion Illusion. By the way, for Always months, has, harping on that for months. I think he's he wants to beat Vertical Threat. Really. Yeah, I, yeah. I think he's. I think he's the best <laughs> sprinter out in, Cal, in Southern California. Three year old too. Three year old. That's a that is actually interesting, Matt. I mean, nobody probably cares that's listening, but uh, vertical threat, collusion, illusion. Those are two three year olds that are going to battle, and they own both those horses. They're well, going to they're going to bump heads. Hopefully in the Malibu. That's what we're going to be aiming at, and with vertical threat, I'm sure. That, that's what I kind of saw in the calendar. Was kind of hoping for. Uh, you know, yeah. it'd be uh, be pretty cool if we're allowed to go to that race uh, with it being here in our backyard. But uh, you know, I've certainly been to Santa Anita before uh, on the day of the Malibu. It'd be be cool to go there, get a calendar, see Vertical Threat win. But uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll, see, what, we'll see what happens uh, with that. But uh, so, Matt, anything else in the races before we go? Anything else that you have? Are you are you killing anybody here? What what are you playing? I mean, I know you got authentic keyed. You like Serengeti Empress, which is coming up. Um, you know, I mean, that leaves us. I, I think it'd be yeah, interesting right? to see these bets you're talking about on betting people not to to finish in the money. Uh, <laughs> I, I think a good bet today would be uh, "Tis the Law." Yep, not in the money. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. AJ is uh, betting every dollar Matt, he has Matt on that, that bet. Matt, Matt gets it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so you know anything about the show? Money, you know, right? That would be uh, that'd be my bet if uh, you know. I think that'd be. A, I actually don't even thing. think that. I don't even think you'd get good odds on it because I think a lot of people are like uh, three to one morning line. I'm sure you get good odds. I, on I don't even know his post position. His I think the smart. I, feel like I think the wise guy play would be him here. off the board. Yeah. It's gotta be. I haven't really heard many people even take him. Mm -mm. On top. Either. And yeah, he's three to one. They get it. People get it. 
Well, they're, they're, they, they're starting to see. Not. They're starting to see what I've been I've been harping on for four months now. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people that lost their Derby future bets on Tis the Law are trying to win some money back by by playing in this race. But uh, now we don't see it. Yeah. I don't see it. Exactly. I don't either. This this field's tough. So the, let, these let, older horses are very tough. Let me ask you, Matt. Are you a California track player mostly? Are you stay on that circuit, or do you bounce around? Or I mean, what's what's your heavy tracks? Well, I, I always like playing uh, the uh, you know Santa Anita Del Mar races, but I tend to win more in the New York races. Oh. Really? So, uh, oh. Saratoga was good to me. Um, this last Belmont meet was not very good to me. Um, but uh, you know, I like uh, kind of uh, betting the the uh, the New York races when. When the uh, you know Ortiz brothers are there per se, so oh, yeah. you know pretty soon I'll be switching to uh, Gulfstream and California races. So always yeah. always stick with the uh, California races, uh, yeah. and then follow kind of where the 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 main jockeys go. You know wherever the the yeah. Ortiz and Castellano is, kind of you know kind of follow those races. So. Man, I'm the, I'm the same way. I, I'll play the New York tracks in the morning. I'll wait for the Southern California tracks. I'll win at New York, and then usually Southern California <laughs> takes all my money. And then he's off. back to fun yeah. which is really by weird Monday. because it's like more true to form, I believe, in Southern California. So you should be winning more there, AJ. Yeah. If you, you know, know what you're doing. I'm not very good at this. So yeah, that's true. That's true. All, all right. So as we always it's do, harder before, to pick winners in smaller fields, right? It there actually really is. Um, I don't know why that makes sense, but it kind of does. You're do right. You, uh, um, well, do you go Golden Gate at all? I don't play Golden Gate very much at all. I used to when I lived in the uh, San Jose area, but that was when Russell Bays was winning every race. So yeah. I would just pick him in every race, and I had a pretty yeah, good right. 90% chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I saw him at the Sacramento Fairgrounds before, and he was like the winningest jockey all time by far. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, all right, so as we always do, a hot pocket bet real quick, guys. Why don't we do it? Anybody out there want a piece of the hot pocket bet? And what race do we want to do? Are we doing? We got to do the next one, I would imagine. Yeah. And the next beer one, or Akeem, rum and coke? Have... Wait, is, is uh, Jay? Are you asking this question? Beer he is. or rum and coke? Jay, I would like a beer. Let me. Know I, I would go rum and coke. I will go diet coke though, because too much sugar yeah, I'll I'll get hammered. Diet. Rum and diet for sure. Yeah, I'll do rum and diet. You, got, coke you guys are cute. Over beer. Mm. Yeah, we gotta watch our girlish figures. I mean, <laughs> Matt, what about you? Beer or rum and coke? No way. But I, I'm more uh, scotch and bourbon than than rum and coke. All right, so all right, bourbon and coke. I mean, that, that diet. Yeah, just yeah. bourbon, yeah. Well, but no coke. No one's going beer. No just, one's going I took, beer. I took the beer. Sarah took the beer. Oddly enough, you'd think that of all of us, that'd be the last person to take the beer. But all right, so why don't we do a hot pocket back real quick? I know Jay, at least out there, maybe D rest will get on on this. Um, what race you want to do? The next race at Keeneland. <laughs> do we have AJ announce the race? That's uh, no, the we're, no, that, that post time to that race is what? We're at a good like 20 minutes, aren't we? 20 minutes. Yeah, oh, so we're mind. just going to do a hot pocket bet. And, and, and my race call would be way too biased. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So quick uh, hot pocket bet on the next race coming up at Keeneland. Who picks first? Because we can't AJ's pick the same one. No, we don't let AJ pick first. He picks last. Okay, then you pick first. Then I'm not picking it. first. I, I oh my goodness gracious! Last. Matt, you pick first. You're on the show. Then we'll go to Jay if he's listening. Well, he's got to be. Right. We're, we're just yep. picking a winner. Yep. Pick a winner. Yeah. All right, I'll take a seven. Seven Gary Ambers. Seven Gary right. Ambers. Okay. I'm taking the nine. Okay. Wait. Well, it's not your turn yet. Hmm. Well, you're getting kind of slow on me. Jay, so he rests. We're leaving it up to you right now. Um. What's a hot pocket? D rest, really? Come on, D rest. You know, please go to your local know. grocery store and check out the frozen. I think snack Jay, Jay's our hot pocket guy. I think we just need to. But that's all right, D rest. Who do you him? like in this race? Yep. D rest, Jay. Who do you guys? Who do you guys like? It's nothing in weird. A hot pocket. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. That's bad. on the seven. I'm on the nine. You just already jumped on that bet. I can't take the seven or the nine. No. Nobody, nobody wants to do it. it. I'm I taking. Know. I'm taking. Uh, I'm not. I'll, I'll take Gamine just to be an asshole. <laughs> but uh, I, just so AJ has to not. Then I'm. Then, then I'm not. I, I don't okay, I won't. I won't. I don't I want to be in. I won't do that to you. Gamine, pick pick another horse. Um, I'll take then. Dress has got the three. Come dancing. 
Okay, you better hurry. You're gonna run out of horses here. Uh, I know. I was gonna go last. Um, I'm gonna take five. Speech. I'm gonna take speech on the inside. Speech All right. Me. So we got a hot, 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 and hot pocket with the bet. With the one, the two, the five, the seven, the nine, and the, oh, the three as well. So good luck to everybody. Good luck today with the rest of the Breeders' Cup races. And Matt, good luck in the classic today. Uh, and, and good luck with Moonlight. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Moonlight. Yes, we gotta, thank we're going to watch her dance so in the circle. Thank you so much for oh, jumping and, on our show. We really appreciate that. Appreciate that. And, and for everybody out there, the Sarah Wendy double today, Moonlight Dior, and then Irish, Irish Heat, Heat Wave. Wave, who Wendy owns in yep. the next race. Four to one, both horses. They See are. What happens. All right. So, Matt, thank you so much, man. Uh, uh, good talking to you. And I'll, I'll see you at the track, I'm sure. Um, All right. Soon, and, uh, we'll get the winner's circle with vertical threat soon. God damn right we yes, will. Yes, we will. Yeah, we will. Did you meet vertical threat? Were you there? Was Matt there? I, I have not uh, not not been uh, to the track when he's ran or any of the barn tours. Uh, I think the, the last uh, barn tour I went on, we got to meet Street Band and Lazy Daisy. So it's been uh, been a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. D Vertical Threat, not a big deal. Missing out on him, he will bite you. He's not a night <laughs> horse at all. You mean bastard. The, uh, you say that, really I fun. think that's just you, though. It might be. No, they said he'd kill a goat if they put it in there. He's he's not a nice horse. Yeah, well, he kind of looked like a goat. So All right. <laughs> the, the last uh, barn tour I went on, I actually got to feed Lava Man a cookie, and he didn't bite me. So that was. That was oh, that's all Lava Man. Wow, that's yeah. that's 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 pretty impressive. These guys don't even know who Lava Man is. You need so. to meet Vertical Threat, then. They don't know. All right. Well, oh, yeah, we'll get you to meet Vertical Threat, yes, by the way. Yes, we'll get that. Sounds so, good. All right, Matt. Good luck. Thanks, Matt. Thank Have you, guys. Good luck today. Have a good yeah, one. Matt. Absolutely. All right, guys. See you later, everybody. Have good luck. Bye-bye.